Right now to just actually create the button that's inside it, I'm just going to select the face and I'm going to actually going to create a totally new object. I'm going to hold down shift on this and bring out a new. I'm going to make it a new object. I'm going to finger that and then select it hopefully. And as you can see because I cloned it from the other object then my center of pivot things right down here. So let's go to here hierarchy, I forgot what it was called then, and then I'll send it to it, send it, send it, center it to my object. I'm going to move it up to the top, bring it down, and then scale it down. Now I can simply just go in here, select these. In fact, what I'm going to do first is come here and bring it out a bit because it's still on the same level. But I need to stick out a bit, so... In fact, I'll just use borders. Just can come down. Now I can just pull this back. I'm gonna go to the top. Just pull this down a bit, just so it fits inside this area, so I haven't got any loose polygons around. In fact, I might as well just pull down the whole thing a bit. There we go. And now you can see how we've got a simple button area. Now it's quickly created. In fact, I think I've noticed a problem. I must have moved this. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it onto there. Now it's perfect. Yep, everything else is looking good. That's about how I like use a technique to model a certain area. I mean, it's, it's a pretty simple area because it's basically a primitive object, but I'll show you more complex things when I come down to here and I start mixing things in. First of all, I need to actually lower the level of the this actual face. Just like that. Just come up, come on to here. In fact, wrong one. I come on to here and if you notice then there's like an edge down here where it lowers. As you can see it's up there as well. And then down here come back to my Beretta and I need to actually make that small area. So I'm just going to hold shift and bring this down a small little bit. I'm going to bring it down right down to the bottom and I'm going to make a small one inside. Oh, sorry about that. Wrong viewpoint. <laughs> I'm going to bring this down on this small amount because I don't want it too distinct. Now I'm going to edge faces, make sure I'm in edge mode, select these. And then connect it. What connect does is basically put a v a little an edge right down the middle of the objects that you've currently selected. Now you can see how I've got more of a curve rather than just a dead end, you know, just a straight line. and looks a lot better really. I'm going to come back here and come back into my left hand viewport because I haven't changed these yet you can see it's a bit muddled up. Bring this out a bit, bring it out a bit more just to actually follow the shape of the actual weapon. Make sure everything's alright. Move this up a bit. Put that back. In fact, I'm going to go to my image reference again just to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Can't actually see it very well here. One sec. Might be able to see. It. Yeah, it can. You can tell it ends straight away. It actually ends with the edge still on it. If you get what I mean. Kind of like how it does there, and then it's going to curve around the back. Now that's done, I'm actually going to start, before I actually start to create this area, I'm going to create a whole new flat surface because I've got a transparent. You can tell that all this surface here, all around here, is all on the same level. Well, just about around here. It's all on the same level, so I don't actually need to make it very complex. I can just make it out of one polygon, like I did before. Just come in here, 
start doing the same thing as same math as I used before. Where right, insert that's by the way, um just comment on what like the V the quality of VTM. I'm not exactly the best modeler in the world, so if I'm doing things wrong then just send me a PM, tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'd like to know myself because I'm I like learning things, obviously. I'm just making this because I've seen quite a lot of people who are new to modeling actually just try and box model a weapon when it, it wastes so many polygons and it's unbelievable. And I just kind of thought, well, I might as well just help these people out. I mean, I learned all how to model from 3D Buzz from VTMs just like this. So I thought, oh, I might as well just make one contribute. Anyway, enough of my chit chat. <laughs> I'm just trying to make the boring parts of because people already know what they're doing basically. I'm just trying to get to like later on stages so I can show you new techniques of how to do things. Right, starting to get up to a complex part around this area and you're kinda wondering how I'm gonna put it all together. Well you might be anyway, or maybe you're just thinking, man this guy's dumb. I'm actually just going to edge that and then tag it, weld that, do that, that, do that, and I don't actually need that, so I'll just press backspace on that and get rid of it. Now, I've actually got this area here. I'll show you. It's actually on a different level, if you can see how it's higher than what I need it to be, really. So I'm just going to select them. In fact, I'm going to get the coordinates for this level. That's 1.986 if you're blind. <laughs> I'm select all these. Hold down shift, bring it down. I'm going to set this perfectly so it's exactly the right height. I'm going to go to my polygon tool. I'm going to create a surface here. Just fill in the little gaps. And that should triangulate itself properly. I don't need to do it myself, really. Now, I could be really picky, just to make the model look a bit better. And just select these, pull them out a bit. In fact, whenever you select a vert that's exactly on the coordinates that you are, you normally pick up the back one. So if you're wondering how I'm actually selecting these now, that's how I'm doing it. It's just a default 3DS Max thing that it does. It selects the furthest one away from you. I think it does anyway. Not actually too sure on the technical side, but it'll just kind of make the area a bit more 3D-ish. I might as well use the polygons rather than just having them blunt. I'm going to come to my polygon tool again. I'm going to create a polygon here. As I said before, because I use the correct coordinates and the surface is totally flat, I can just freely create one and don't have to worry about how it triangulates it. Select that, delete that, just so it's perfect. Right, I'm just going to quickly change that to black. I don't know, I just always like black. It's a lot easier to see. Right, now things are looking quite good. Um, I'll just take off edge faces to kind of show you what we've done so far. Cause the big button there, as you can see, that's going to go in this area here. And I'm not going to really have to worry about what it's going to look like, so I can just model that as another piece of model, another piece of geome geometry, should I say? And let's come back into here and now think about what we're going to do now. This level here changes to another flat surface around this area, and it kind of flows up here and around here. So basically, what I'm going to do is right. Basically, ah, it's hard to, hard to describe. Right, this is on. Right, I'll just put that on 2 so it's easier for you to understand. Right, this is on 2. This has got to lower down here. So this surface is going to be 1. If this surface is...